Hey guys, I just wanted to clear up uh, some stuff regarding what I teach about being born again and the heart issue within a uh, child of God, right? There's some people that are confused about the heart because there's scriptures in the Bible, well, there's specifically one scripture in the Bible that talks about the heart is wicked and who, the heart of man is wicked and who can know it, right? And that is true. When every scripture in the Bible is true. It just depends on if it's in correct context and whether it's true or not, right? Uh, who's got the wicked heart and who doesn't? Here's the, here's the issue right here. Just like when the cross happened, things changed, right? It's like when we get saved, some things, huge things change, right? We're not the same person that we were before when we get saved. And that is a fact, right? It's a verifiable fact by the scripture. All things are made new, the Bible tells us, when we get saved. What's that talking about? Well, we know it's not talking about our flesh or tangible shell that we live in. It's talking about the spiritual side of things. The real us on the inside. We're turned into a new creation. Right? And there's a scripture back in Ezekiel 36, 26 where it goes through a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Okay. Now, what's this saying? Well, some people are confused thinking at the end when it says I'll give you a heart of flesh that all it's talking about is a blood pumping fleshly heart. No, it's not what it's talking about. It's just the Bible is drawing a contrast and it's what it's like the Bible does in all over God's word. It draws comparisons between things and it uses analogy. Right? It uses different techniques to explain things. Excuse me. This scripture right here is talking about when a person gets a new spirit, what is that, you know, what does that remind you of? Right? When you're born again, everything is made new. Right? This scripture right here. I believe is talking about when you get born again deep down within you your identity has changed and you're no longer dead in sin you're no longer the wicked heart person you're no longer of the world you are a totally changed creature on the inside now what we're not saying when we're saying this is that you totally become perfect you never do anything wrong and you never hardly sin not, that's not what we're saying. Because you still have the sin, that the sin power of sin that dwells in the flesh, like Paul talked about. There's no good thing in my flesh. Right? Paul never said there's no good thing in my spirit. There's no good thing in my heart. He said there's no good thing in my flesh. So, before you get saved, that power of sin dwells throughout your whole entire being. Right? Heart, spirit, you know everything but when you get saved God does a, a spiritual circumstance that cuts you, cuts you away from that quarantines you you're born again in the spirit like I've said before a foreshadowing of us, us being born again in this flesh is in the sin you know with the sin in the flesh like Mary uh, carrying Jesus he was perfect, holy inside of a sinful woman, right? But he wasn't touched by the sin that was in her. Jesus was perfect. Uh, not sinful whatsoever. That is a image of when we're born again. Uh, we're made new on the inside. Perfect. Born of the Spirit, right? And even though we have the power of sin in our flesh, that can that is quarantined away and it cannot ever affect or infect our spirit, right? 
So I believe Ezekiel 36, 26 is speaking of this morning and experience. And when it says, I'll give you a heart of flesh and remove the heart of stone, right? And you can also hear a lot, like in the Old Testament, people's hearts were cold uh, about the certificate of divorce because of people's, you know, basically cold heart. See, so it, it talks about it a lot in the Bible about it. A wicked heart, you know, a heart of stone. Remove the heart of stone, give you a heart of flesh. And the, and what the Bible is doing here is it's saying, hey, what is this heart of stone? Be hard, cold, you know, just ridiculous. Heart of flesh, tangible. What is flesh? Tangible, soft, okay? It's not a hard, stony thing. So that's what it's talking about I don't see how any clearer this could be when it's talking about when you're born again all things are made new not of your flesh but of the spirit and you have new desires that's coming from the real you the new you on the inside your desires for the Lord you have an undying love for Christ the Bible says once you get born again and I think that, that that is supposed to be true of every Christian. But what if some people don't... Some people say, oh, I'm a Christian, I don't feel that. Well, sometimes people can <clears throat> ne neglect their relationship with the Lord and just go out and live in the flesh and do whatever they want to do and live like Satan. Yeah, that affects... Uh, that's going to affect how you feel. You're going to feel condemned. You're going to, you know... If you just act like the world and you, know, you don't have a care in the world, but deep down and deep, deep down inside, it's going to tear you up inside. Because I remember uh, whenever I got saved years ago and I had just went down a path of, you know, crazy rebellion, drinking, this and that. Like, not just drinking, I mean, drinking everything. And it was just tearing me up on the inside because I knew that's not me. That's not who I really am. You know, the sin that I thought I enjoyed, I deep, deep down inside did not enjoy it. That's the point, right? But what part of you is enjoying the sinful act? Well, it's the flesh part. It's not the real you. It's not your heart. It's not what you really desire. See, when we we're about to get tempted to sin, I mean, really, sit down and think about this for a second. When you're tempted to sin, what are you immediately thinking about? Ways of not to do it. Try to get. You're trying to get out of it. De, you know, you're tempted. The flesh part of you is tempted to do it, but the new you, it's a totally different story. It's not enticing the you. It's enticing the shell that you're living in. Okay. Uh, you as a born again child of God, and not of this world, sin. When you, you know. Sin doesn't jive with who you really are now. That's why you have such a problem with it, right? That's why you can sit there and really, truly have a problem with abortion. Really, truly have a problem with murder, rape, theft, all this stuff. Because you're not of this world and you're not of that. Now, does that mean you would never commit those sins? No. All kinds of Christians in the Bible commit all kinds of grievous sins. That doesn't mean they're of the world. It means they're a Christian that committed a sin. Right? So, just get, getting down to the truth of it all, when you get tempted, what part of you is getting tempted here? Right? Is it the real you, the inner man, the new you, or is it your fleshly self? Uh, your fleshly shell. Right? And a lot of Christians are preaching wrong. They're saying, oh, that's the real you that really wants that. You really want that. And no, it's it's not. It's fiery darts of the enemy coming from outside of you. Right? And it's clinging on to your flesh. And because you live in this flesh, you're so, you're so closely connected to it. You're going to think that, oh, man, wow. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Well, there was something wrong with you 
before you got saved. You are dead in sins. You're an enemy of God. You're a child of Satan. The wrath of God abided on you. Once you get saved, you still commit sinful acts. But you're the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what the Bible says. The real you. Now, is your flesh the righteousness of God in Christ? No. We've got to learn to separate the flesh from the spirit, okay? We've got to learn to separate these things. And the Bible's not saying God's going to give you a fleshy heart to pump in blood after you get saved. No. It's a spiritual thing here. If you notice you get saved, your desires change towards the Lord. Right? But you still get tempted by sin on the outside. It tempts your flesh. And then you get that confused and thinks that that's your true, true identity in Christ. That's your true desire to go out and rape, kill, steal, and destroy. No, it's not. That's where people are getting confused. They're still walking around like uh, they're the scum of the earth. That's what the enemy wants you to be in, right? He wants you to totally be focused in fighting with yourself when you should be focused on Jesus Christ focused on what he thinks of you 24-7 because he is pleased because of what he's done on the cross and you are the righteousness of God in Christ he's not pleased with your simple actions I'm not ever I'm not, I'm not ever said that you know though lordship salvation is some people would say that I say that no God is pleased with the real you your true identity, who you really are. And he knows that you get uh, temptation and he knows you sin and he died for all your sins, past, present, and future. (sighs) But I just want to clear some of that up. A lot of people have a problem with uh, new heart teaching because they still think that uh, even though all things are made new of the real identity, they're still wicked. Well, yeah, in your flesh you commit with wicked acts, right? But does that mean that's who you really are? No, it doesn't. And you got to quit thinking that. As long as you keep thinking that, you're going to live in eternal defeat, right? You're going to totally think God's PO'd at you all the time. You're going to think... Oh man, there's no way I could get close to the Lord because look what I did. Look what, look what I did. Look what I desired. Look what I did. It's your flesh that's desiring it, okay? Paul, Romans 7. No longer I, but the sin that dwelleth in me. Now, what's that supposed to mean? No longer I, but the sin that dwelleth in me. We all know what that means. This perfectly runs in contrast with your new desires. Okay, the good that he wants to do, he doesn't do. The evil he does, he does. And when he does good, uh, evil is present with him. Evil is present with him, that's what the scripture says. Now, where is that evil? He's talking about the power of sin in the flesh, guys. He's not talking about his uh, spirit. He's not talking about the real him. Paul was going in Romans chapter 7 perfectly describing this uh, Christian struggle that we all have. That there's an, hey, there's an outside evil force here that's on the inside of this fleshly uh, shell that we live in that is messing with us and fighting and warring with our spirit and trying to pull us in the wrong way all the time. But that's not you. Something has changed when you got born again. That's not you. Right, you're a new creation and your heart is for the Lord you love the Lord just because you sin does not mean that you do not love him with this new heart that he's given you your desire is for him why do you think as a lot of Christians you know feel just so ashamed when they make mistakes Christians that are caught in repetitive sin right just feel ashamed feel just like God is gonna just you know I tell you right now it'd be really hard for me to believe that an unsaved person 
who cares so much about the Lord and love the Lord, right? Because you can't really love the Lord when you're unsaved. Because that's why the New Testament says we love, we have an undying love for Jesus. And uh, our heart is for Him. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of clear up uh, what I believe to be the truth, right? That God has made us brand new from the inside out. And there's a lot of preachers that still preach that uh, you're not totally made new on the inside. You still have this wicked, stony heart, even though the Bible says he's removed that from you. All right? And then they blame you, you know, they uh, say, I don't know, I just don't know how much of a clear this could be. All right? That you are born again and you are a new creation. That's not your flesh. Right? And I will give you, okay, here it is. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Remove the cold, dark, wicked, stony heart. Put in something soft, tangible. Something that, uh, something new. Okay? Something that, a new desires, right? Before you were saved, did you ever have a desire? To truly love the Lord. Did you ever? No. No. Now there are unsaved uh, people that think they're saved. That think they have a desire for the Lord. But they don't. What they're doing is they're acting out of fear. Because they're worried they're going to go to hell if they don't do it. And they think that's love. No. They're not saved. Because they never trusted Christ alone. So it can get kind of murky. And hard to understand sometimes with some people. But you look at your motives, you know. Are your motives, I better do this or I'm going to hell? Or are your motives, I love the Lord, I don't want to do this because I don't, you know, because I love Him and I don't really want to do it. But I think I want to do this sin because my flesh is enticed by it. All right. The other day, uh, I'm about to end this video, the other day I had a, I was, uh, praying, like, trying to, you know, talk to the Lord, and just, <clears throat> I was trying to find the answers of, you know, there's so many people and habitual sins, you know, we all have habitual sins, you know, and I was trying to find the answer to, you know, get deliverance from things, you know, and it was just like the Lord kept putting in my mind, in my heart, love, you know, love. Love for him. Like, that is what would have to overcome your desire for something. Right? Because people that are trapped in addiction, people that are trapped in all kinds of things, you know, and it tears them up because they're a born again Christian and they, they want to be free from it, but. At the same time, their flesh is not free from it, but they don't want it, you know. Uh, the Lord knows what we're all going to go through, right? He knows the future. And thank God He died for us, despite that. And that should show everybody that it's not about, it's just, being saved is not about your behavior. At all. It's about Christ's love for you. But anyways, I'm going to end this video, guys. Love you guys. Uh, hope that clears some stuff up. Uh, some people don't agree with me with this, but and they still think that they have the wicked heart, even though they're born again from the inside out. Um, but, you know, we're all brothers and Christ, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ, and... Uh, At the end of the day, the truth will work itself out, right? God bless everybody. Everybody have a great day.